I'm speechless. Welcome back, everybody, to Farming Simulator 22. I am an old guy gaming, and it is September 3rd. It's 5 p.m., and we are going to sell some stuff. So let's see. We are sitting at $17,000. I did some contracts on September 2nd. I uh, had some really strange things going on with, <laughs> with, the, uh, with the bales in the sausages. And uh, what I ended up having to do, because... I showed you a little bit of that in the in the opening sequence there, um, but basically these uh, two I had two full 24. Well, actually one was a 24 and one was a 22 sausages that were just going berserk. I, I mean they were like going all over the place. Like they had flopped over into the other field and it just going crazy. So I ended up deleting them using uh, you know the admin tools. And I just spawned in 48 new uh, silage bales and, and kind of, you know, lined them up. And what we'll do is when these when these ones that behaved uh, turn into silage, they're already 73% there, you know, then, well, it doesn't matter because, you know, we'll, we'll still have the same amount. So I have no idea why that happened, but, yeah, they just went absolutely nuts. <laughs> that's just the weirdest thing. Uh, so anyway, that's why I've got the orange bales there uh, for two of the stacks instead of the, um, you know, the black ones. Uh, but anyway, yeah, uh, so our first order of business here is to sell some items. So we're going to start off with, let's see, we're going to sell cake, butter, cheese, and milk, I think. Yeah, I think we will sell some milk, too. Um, so I think what we'll do actually is let's get this flatbed trailer because I don't think we're going to have enough pallets to uh... <laughs> it's okay alright anyway <laughs> that was my wife's phone she was in here in my office earlier talking to me and she she left it in here and it started ringing and I looked at my phone and my phone wasn't actually ringing I'm going what in the world's going on anyway um yeah this is kind of interesting it's got all like pushed back into there so if I can grab the tongue and bring it around this way okay what were we talking about <laughs> I totally got uh, I think I was saying that, yeah, I don't think we're, we're going to have a ton of pallets, so we can probably just use the flatbed and the pickup here uh, for everything that we're going to do. Okay, so let's go on over here and let's see, I think I mentioned to you that I did some contracts. I did a couple of cultivating contracts and a couple of fertilizing contracts because by the time I was completely done with the hay and you know all the worker using you know, that we use the stuff where I was almost out of money. I mean it cost us a lot of money to do all that um, but I, I really enjoyed that though. I, I you know if nothing else it was kind of fun to do the hay that way making the sausages and using the you know the course plane all that. Whether or not it's the most efficient way to do it I don't know, that might be debatable, but it was fun. I enjoyed it. But, you know, I think I mentioned this in the last episode. I, I think that probably the best way to do hay is going to be with, uh, you know, fermentation silos. Uh, so that's kind of what I'm thinking about doing in the in the near future. Here. Okay, let's look at this first. Uh, we're going to go to the, uh, to the prices. And uh, seasonal fluctuations. So what's going to sell good right now is milk. So milk sells best in September. And bread isn't good till December, but cake is going to sell good in September. So we're going to sell cake. We're going to sell butter because the bakery is already completely jam-packed with butter. It's completely full. Uh, so we can sell this excess. <clears throat> Excuse me. Um, cheese is best in September. And so we got that. Uh, fabric and clothes isn't until April. And I 
think that's it. Okay, so pretty much just all those, you know, the, the cake and the dairy products. Okay, so let's go here and we want to choose our cake here. And we have 6,882 liters and we want to change the output mode to storing and it should throw all of the pallets out there. That's a pretty decent amount of pallets of cake. All right, so let's get those loaded. All right, and then let's see who is going to give the best price for cake. Thirty-six sixty-nine, thirty-seven twenty-four. Mama Joe's Mini Mart is going to give the best price for cake. Very good. Okay, what about butter? Nine ninety, nine ninety, nine ninety-one. Mama Joe's Mini Mart has the best price on butter too. So let's go ahead and grab all of our extra butter out of here. Change output mode to storing on that. We need to put this back to distributing. Okay, so it looks like that's all we have for butter because most of that's been going into the dairy for to make the cake. Okay, so we'll change this back to distributing. And we'll load up the butter. Okay, let's look at cheese next. Uh, okay, so 1917, 1941, 1963, 68, 69. So the red marble's going to give us the best price, at least currently, on cheese. All right. And milk, 777. So it looks like the dairy, that's the, uh, the default dairy is going to give... Wait a minute, what? Yeah, the default dairy over by the ballpark is going to give the best price on milk, seven seventy seven. Okay, so let's take these, this product to Mama Joe's Mini Mart. Uh, we have, if, if you haven't been watching the series, we have like, I think a $250,000 loan hanging over our heads that we got to deal with. Um, most of that came from purchasing field 57. So again, you know, it's a temporary thing. Oh, that's not good. <laughs> oh, Lordy. Uh, okay. It, it's a temporary thing, but I get the trailer flipped too. There. All right. Let's just pretend that never happened. <laughs> Goodness gracious. Uh, anyway, what were we talking about? Uh, I can't remember what we were talking about. <laughs> we got totally sidetracked there. Okay. Oh, yeah, we got the bank loan. Um, mostly, most of that was for Field 57. So I want to, you know, pay as much of that off as possible. So let's just see what we make here. All right, so basically 29.2 plus 2,000 is 31.2. So we made about 30, well, actually, here, yeah, we can just look here. Uh, sold products, yeah, 31.279 from those products. Okay. Not too bad money, considering there's just not really that many pallets. All right, now we're going to grab the cheese out of here. So let's go to cheese and set that to storing. That's all we're going to get, eh? Okay. 
Set this back to distributing. I think it um, it was red marble, right? It was best with this. We're gonna have to be careful because it's really flopping around since all the weight's on the front. We might even even be able to have just loaded this on the pickup. Alright, we got some lag going on here. Okay, let's look at this again. Jeez. So 1969. Actually, Mama Joe's Market is now uh, the same price, and it's a lot closer. So let's go back there now. So red red marble dropped a, a dollar in that little time frame there. Okay, we made 11,000 off of that. Okay, I think that's it for pallet items. Now we're gonna just sell uh, any milk that we have currently in the cow barn. Eggs, I think eggs are November, right? Uh, no, October. Okay, so eggs will be next. Well, October and November, actually. So we might actually wait until November just so we have a little extra. And I won't take any more of the. Well, actually, the bakery should be completely full anyway of eggs. Uh, yeah, it's it's chocked full, so. Yeah, we might wait until November then to sell the eggs, just so we get as many as we possibly can. Okay, let's load up the milk. A little over 7,000 liters. Let's check the price again to see if it adjusted at all. Uh, seventh bakery is 770. Uh, the dairy is 777. Okay. Yeah, so that's the dairy over by the ballpark. So let's head over there to sell this milk. All right, so we made 56.82 off of that. Uh, and that concludes our sales for September. Uh, so what did we make in total here? Let's take a look. Sold price. We made $43,095 from cake, cheese, butter, and milk. And the butter and milk were excess, you know, after what's being used by the bakery. Okay, there we go. So that gives us a little bit of money. Not enough to get the bank paid off, but we're we're working on it, man. We're not gonna be able to pay the bank off until January. That's where we're gonna make the big bunny. Okay, let's take a look at end of the month finances here. Get up on our porch here. Uh, except for I'm stuck. There we go. Sit down at the table, pull out our laptop, and take a look and see what we got going on here.
All right, so we didn't buy anything in September. We spent $28,000 on vehicle repairs. Wow, that's a lot. Uh, leasing costs, fifteen seventy one. I still have the fast bailer. I haven't decided 100% yet if I'm done with that. Uh, but let's go. Look, we'll come back to that. I have a couple things to say about that. Uh, property maintenance is $806. Uh, we made $115 of production costs. I'm not sure how, but we did. Uh, we made $5,682 from milk and $4,300 from sold products. Uh, so basically $4,800 in total from our sales-ish. Water costs $559. We made $1,700 or netted $1,700 from contracts. We paid our workers $9,000. And five hundred fifty-five dollars in loans. We're at, we have a two hundred fifty thousand dollar loan. We could pay some of that off, but um, I think I'm just going to sit on the money that we currently have. Incidentally, there's a couple of really nice big tractors uh, for sale, but there's just no way I can afford them right now. I mean, I could if if I took even more loans, but uh, we we don't need them. It'd be nice to have them, but we don't need them. Okay, so that's pretty much it, guys, uh, for September. Uh, all of our chores should be done. Let me just double check here. Uh, let's see. Chickens are good on food. Cows are pretty much almost completely full on food. Sheep are good. Uh, all of the greenhouses should be good. Water seeds and manure, so that's all in good shape. And all of our productions are blue, which means they're all producing stuff uh, okay yeah so that is it for september uh so when we get into october we're going to have the computer farmer hay contracts and probably a few more contracts to do too uh we don't we shouldn't really have anything to do on our farm other than you know just the monthly chores so october is probably pretty much going to be mostly uh contract work let's take a look though because i thought there was an item or two that we could sell in October. We just looked at that, right? So let's look again. Uh, what was that that was an October sale? It was, I think it was eggs, but we wanted to wait till November on eggs so we can sell a few more. Um, straw is actually good in December. We're not, we don't have really have enough hay to sell. We might sell some straw in December and uh, we'll wait till January for the silage as usual. Uh, bread's going to be good in December. So we have quite a, you know, we're, we definitely have bread saved up and chocolate is January. Okay. So yeah, probably not. Uh, we could sell eggs in October, but I don't think I will. I'm going to just wait until November as long as the prices can, you know, continue to uh, stay as they are. Okay, so, yep, I'm going to uh, move into October 1st, and uh, I'll bring you guys back at that point. So, see you in next month. All right, guys, uh, welcome to October. I had a little bit of a technical issue. <laughs> I had, uh, we moved into October, and I took the October contracts that I wanted to take, and... I uh, I thought I was recording, and I think I was, but my mixer board actually fell over. <laughs> it fell off the stand that I keep it on, and I, I think I stopped the recording, or maybe I wasn't recording, I don't know, but anyway, um, that the footage that I recorded when we went into October, I lost it. That's the bottom line. So let me kind of bring you up to speed to what's happening. So we are on Field 71. We're doing the... Um, uh, the computer farmer hay contracts, October contracts. And I have, um, I've, I've borrowed the equipment from, you know, the Field 71 farmer, which include, includes the crone and, you know, the baler and all that. And it's a silage contract. And so I set up a course here on Field 71. If you look on the right-hand side, it says F71 hay harvest. And it's basically, you know, a very same kind of course that, you know, that we did on our own fields. And so I'm going to let the... Uh, the AI finished the mowing and then I'll go along and, and get the stuff along the sides that I normally would do uh, if I wasn't using course play. Uh, we've got 
the baler out here with the V-rake. There's plenty of, of room along the edge of this field, so I think I don't think the V-rake will be a problem. Also, when I first started, I forgot to set to wind growing, so that's <laughs> that's what that mess is there. Uh, so it looks like our dude just finished the double headland. So he's going to then go to wherever he's going to start for the up and down, which is probably going to be on this end of the field. Uh, the cool thing about this, though, is that uh, you know, the mowing's going to be a little bit more accurate than just the base game AI because the base game AI always misses a little bit of the, you know, the hay kind of on the edges and stuff. So uh, here is the course if you want to see it here. So it looks like they're going to actually start maybe up on this end, I'm guessing. Let's just see what he does. Um... And so, yeah, I took that and let's see, I took several cotton harvesting contracts. I took those because uh, we'll be able to take whatever extra cotton we get from those and put them in our own spinnery. Um, so that's the main reason why I took the cotton contracts. And we borrowed the equipment for that, of course, too, because I don't I don't have any cotton harvesting equipment. And then I took a couple cultivating, a couple fertilizing, I think. Um, actually, here we can just look at them. Yeah, this is everything we took. So we took all the, you know, the usual hay contracts. A few of those are hay. Most of them are silage. We took a couple cultivating, a couple fertilizing. And then um, we took several cotton harvesting, like I mentioned. We took a, a pretty good size soybean and a pretty good size sunflower. That's a cotton, that's a cotton, and that's another soybean. Uh, yeah, I didn't take any of these harvesting contracts because they're, they're, you know, low money ones. All right, so that's pretty much, I think, get you caught up to where we are. Now, what I was doing was uh, I was just getting ready to, yeah, take this combine out to the sunflower field. Uh, but before we do that, let's actually move over to here. Uh, no, 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 that's not what I want to do. Uh, I'm going to uh, jump in this little JCB here. And we're going to take this uh, grain trailer out to field 38, which is our largest sunflower field. Because um, there's supposed to be a way, I haven't, I haven't done this yet, but there's supposed to be a way for um, course play to have the combine automatically offload into a nearby trailer. So I want to see if I can figure that out, because then if that's the case, then I can have the sunflower harvesting pretty much be almost completely autonomous. Now, I could also set up auto drive to have the worker deliver, but I, can, I could probably also just do that from the base game uh, thing, too. So we are going to work with auto drive, but my plan for auto drive is I'm not really planning on really doing much with it until harvest time, or not harvest time, um, selling time in January. And uh, auto drive is actually more complex than course play from what I've seen. There's more to it. Uh, but what I want to do is I want to get this guy out to the sunflower field and then see if we can figure out how to get the combine to automatically load into the trailer. So basically what happens is the combine, once it fills up, it it drives itself over to the trailer and offloads. Okay, so let's just park you along the field, maybe right about here-ish. Okay, and then we'll head back to the combine. Uh, no, not that combine. This combine. All right, yeah, let's get this out to 38. Actually, I want to go this way. Okay, let's get him on the field. Uh, all right, now, what? what is this? This is a 608C corn and sunflower header. Uh, I want to figure out what the width is. Okay, this is a six-meter header. 
Okay, that's going to be important because that's kind of going to be kind of based, uh, you know, what this course is going to be based off is the six meter corn hitter. Okay, so now let's go to here. Uh, target is not on a field. Oh, let's get him on the field. Okay. All right, so we are going to want to do a headland. I don't think we need to do two headlands. Smooth corners, up and down. I don't think we need to skip rows. Uh, okay, so let's generate the course. Okay, now let's go here and we want to create a new folder. And this is field 38. All right, and then we want to save the course and we want to call this F38 six meter. Here, let's just do six M corn sunflower. No, not core N, for goodness sakes. Okay, so that way we know that this course is set up for a six meter wide, either corn or sunflower header. Okay, so that takes care of that. Now, um, there, there's supposed to be a way, like I said, to get this guy to show course, open HUD with mouse, only turning on field, raise tools, stop, uh, combine self unload, okay. Combine drives to trailer on or near the field to unload. Not supported in multi-tools or convoy mode. Okay, so yeah. Um, let's see, this is Sunflower, so we don't need to do straw swath. So, so theoretically, what's supposed to happen then is the Combine will detect that this trailer's here. And um, he'll go offload uh, into the trailer all by himself. That's the theory. Anyway. Okay, so let's go here. Okay, you want you want to start at the first waypoint. And okay. Let's see what happens. Okay, so I'll bring you guys back when uh, the combine is is full. And let's see if he comes over and offloads all by himself to the trailer. Uh, you're a little too far out there, buddy. All right, guys. Um, the uh, mower is done on field 71. And so I just want to bring it back and just kind of show you uh, what, you know, how that went. So. He did leave a, a little bit of stuff left over still. Kind of like the the base game AI does. So I kind of figured he'd do a little bit better job. But uh, maybe not. So we're going to have to go along and, and get this. And also I'm going to go along the border and grab some of the uh, border grass true, uh, too. And then what we'll do is we'll set the Worker B has completed it. Oh, yeah. That's just some transport that I was doing. Um, then we'll set the baler loose on this field. Uh, so they seem to do a better job along through here uh, because the base, the base game AI often leaves patches of grass on along this angle. Uh, so there was that little spot there. But it looks pretty good here. Okay, here's another spot here. But it, it's better than what they normally do, but they still seem to leave just a little bit up here, which is interesting. But the one thing, you know, we you can't get the the base game AI to do is to, is to do headlands. So at least the course play guy will do that. Right, 
to go here too. I think the sunflower combine is just about full too, so we want to go see how he's doing. Uh, so let's just tab over to you. What? Are, yeah, you're 95%. Okay, let's just stick with this guy real quick and see. Uh, I'm expecting that when he's completely full, he's going to go over and offload himself. That's what's supposed to happen. So let's just wait and see what happens here. Okay, so he's full. And he should drive over to that trailer and offload. Let's see what he does. Actually, he's only 99%. That's interesting. They didn't go all the way to 100. Well, I guess I said should say she. Looks like it's going to work. Okay, looks like it's working. Um, Hands-free, I'm not doing any of this, by the way. <laughs> That's pretty cool. Very cool. Um, let's see how full this ends up getting with the, the first load. And I'll probably move the trailer um, over that direction onto the field, too. Okay, so it's 24% full. One thing about sunflowers is they're pretty light uh, in comparison with other crops. So you can usually fill these trailers almost all the way completely to the top. Because I, ha you know, I have the weight limitation thing turned on. All right, so that seems to work pretty good. I like it. Less babysitting for me. So let's park this trailer here, and we'll just basically leave these guys uh, alone. If this trailer can fill all the way up to 100%, then basically three more loads will go in here. Awesome. Okay, so let's see. Let's go back to here. And we were just kind of doing some cleanup from the mowing. So the mowing itself on um, course play is not really that much better than the base game. But the more important thing is it sets the course, you know, for the bailing. And the bailing uh, is way better on course play than it, well, you can't really technically even do it on the base game AI. Okay, we got some a corner piece here. Let's grab this. Okay. And that's pretty... Oh, nuts. I didn't mean to do that. Okay. So, yeah, we're going to do one pass just along the border like we normally would do. So let's do that now. And uh, hopefully the V-Rake will, will just, you know, pick this up automatically. It should, but we'll see. All right, we made, a, made it around. So we are going to send this guy up to the north fields. Let's get him out on the road here. Uh, and I want you to clear your current course and then set destination and go stage up here. Very good. Okay. Let's uh, go to you. Get 
this unfolded. And I'm going to Let's see, we want you to be on 150 centimeter bales. Okay. I'm just gonna kinda get this corner here. See if I can pull. Uh, nope, caught on the tree there. See if I can pull some of this in. I didn't mean to actually cut it out that far. There we go. Okay, so um, let's go ahead and. Go to here, and we want field 71. We want a load course. Wait, nope. Sorry, hit the wrong thing there. A load course, activate. Target location is not. Uh, wait, what? We have to get on the field a little bit more. Load course, activate. There we go. Okay, start at the first waypoint. Okay, it looks like it's probably not going to get all of the stuff on the edge. Well, it'll probably get most of it, and then I'll just have to come along later and get the rest of it. So the only thing we're going to have to be cognizant of is because it's doing the headland first. If I tell it to start at the end point, does it go in reverse? Okay, hold on. Hold on, hold the phone. If you start at last waypoint, how does that work? Let's just see. Because if it does the headland last, then stuff's not gonna be in the way. You know, bales aren't gonna be in the way when it's going up and down. Whoa, where are you going, man? It looks like it's still going along the, the normal path. All right, so maybe last waypoint means go to the last waypoint that you were at, not the last waypoint on the map. I think that's probably what that means. Because that's the only thing that makes sense. Okay, well, then let's just let it do its thing. We're probably going to have, you know, some bales in the way uh, because of the headland, but I think there's a setting that lets you, or that you can, where you can have, actually have them start in the middle, maybe. I don't know. Well, let's just let it run and see how it does. Okay. Um, what's next here? We got you. Okay, I'll come back to you. I want to see how our sunflower dude's doing. He's at 68% right now. Or she is, rather. Okay. Fair enough. You're back at the ranch. Now, I realized something after, uh, kind of after the fact, and that is, I actually want you to go down to the shop and get that cotton trailer. Most of the cotton harvest wants to go to my spinnery, and I'm a little bit leery about doing that because I've, well, What's supposed to happen from what you guys were telling me in the comments is that if a contract goes to your production, you you dump them, you know, you dump the goods off, but you don't actually get those goods except for whatever the bonus 
the bonus is. Excuse me. So, yeah, we're going this way. So I have to think about if I if I want to actually do that. Um, but one of the cotton harvests is, is for the the normal spinnery, so we're going to do that one first. And that's on field 40, uh, 42. Okay, so let's send you to 42. And I'm just going to have you stage right here. Okay. And then I'm going to drive the cotton harvester down to 42. Let's unfold. So this is a round harvester. So this, what happens with this one is you you fill like the a front compartment up first, and then it pushes it into the back compartment to start making the bale. But I think you have to fill it four times to get a full bale. I used this once before. Now, what we're going to do here is we're going to start uh, GPS, and we're going to go, what direction are we headed? 270, okay. Uh, so we're going to do the uh, A, A plus heading. Uh, okay. And this is field 42. We'll save that. Okay. And then if we do this. Oh, it's not uh, detecting the width of this correctly. I think if we do an Alt R. Yeah, there we go. Okay. All right, let's go. So it looks like it's hitting six rows at a time, which is good. All right, now I'm actually going to cancel this and have a worker do this because i got to go figure out what happened to the other guy. Probably got stuck somewhere. Oh, we don't need to show this. Yep. You got stuck somewhere. I'm just going to drive right over the top of you because you're a moron. <laughs> Okay, so we'll just stage you right here. Um, all right. Let's go. You're he must have just yeah, he must have just dropped off again. Okay, good. So this guy's doing pretty good, or gal's doing pretty good. You are blocked. So what I'm going to probably do here is just go along and remove some of these bales that are going to cause problems. Okay, that should clear things up uh, for the baler. So it has pretty much a free shot for the whole field. Uh, but I like this. This is working out pretty good overall, for sure. Not bad at all. All right, you guys. Well, um, I think you all pretty much get the gist of what's going to happen. I just have a lot of work to do, uh, you know, with all these contracts. And so I think I'm going to, uh, yeah, we'll cut the camera here and I'll bring you back with an update uh, later on. So see you in a bit. All right, guys, I'm back, and um, 
This baler is about ready to make its first bale. So the front chamber just emptied out into the back chamber and the back chamber now has a full bale. Uh, so we could keep going until the front chamber is almost full and then we have to eject the bale. So you can see that in the lower right hand corner. Oh, wait a minute, never mind. Looks like it ejects the bale automatically. I've, this is only the second time I've used this machine. The first time I used it was a long time ago, so... Pulley's not allowed while the tool's turned on. How do we drop the bale? Oh, Z. Okay. Oh, that's cool. Okay. Uh, mo most of the cotton harvesting I've done uh, so far in this game has been with the, the case, which is the square bale harvester. So I'm not super familiar with this one. But let's go ahead and turn GPS off and just set a worker going on this, a base worker. And let's see, this is a 10,000 liter, two ton cotton bale. Looks like it's wrapped in wax. It's really cool. Okay, let's get the trailer and we'll pick this thing up and take it down to the spinnery. Uh, I got this guy going on a course here on field 18. Sunflower guy is doing pretty good, or sunflower gal. Look back, it looks like she just dropped off. Um, this trailer is 74% full. Okay. So this is what we want here. Operating position, B. Oh, Okay. So I guess we, it kind of works a little bit like the Anderson um, hay baler pickup, I think. Look at that, that's cool. I like it. So I'm guessing we can transport four of these big bales on here. Very cool, okay. So let's just kind of park you right about here. And we'll uh, keep going here. All right guys, we are just about finished here with 42. Got this one little strip left. Okay, so, excuse me, um, so I'm not sure how this works. We've got 34% left in the harvester and 77% of a bale. So if we eject the bale now, does it add the 34% to it? Here, let's turn that off. Okay, um, let's see. Lift harvester, fold harvester, turn off, automatic drop. Yeah, I don't see a command for creating the bail. Uh, what does Y do? Nothing. What does R do? Hmm. That just lifts that. Oh, there we go, Y. Why wasn't that working before? I don't know. Okay, so... It's not going to take the 34% that's still in there. Really? Uh, okay. See, the square cotton baler will will just create a smaller bale and use everything that's in there, but this apparently does not. I would have 
I would have thought that it would have taken what was in the front chamber and added it before it created the bale. Alright. Well, this ultimately probably won't be an issue for us because we're going to keep using this on other fields, but it seems a little bit odd is all. Okay, well, anyway. Let's load up this other bale. Okay, so we'll put that thingy away. And I want you to run up to the spinnery. And let's see, that is a place that we don't usually go to. I think it's right here. Yep, it's right there. Okay. So just go and stage right there, and then I'll come up and offload. In the meanwhile, uh, we're going to take this harvester and move it to the next cotton field that we have to do. All right, so that's going to be, we just did. 42. Oh, let's just move right on over to 41 since it's right across the way here. So I believe all the rest of the cotton contracts are going to go to my spinnery. And again, I won't get, I won't actually get any of the cotton except for the bonus amount from what I understand about that. So we'll give that a try and see how that works. I'll still get the money and I'll still get the bonus amount, but I won't get the actual cotton. Which is a, I guess, I mean, yeah, it kind of makes sense, I suppose. Because in the end, it doesn't matter. If I was delivering it to the spinnery I didn't own, it would still come out the same in the wash, I suppose. It just kind of seems a little weird that I'm going to deliver all the cotton to my spinnery, but it's all going to, like, vanish except for the little bit of bonus at the end. <laughs> so it's kind of strange, but I guess that's the way that they worked it out. It's a pretty nice machine, though. It better be for how much the doggone thing costs. I think this thing is, like, over $700,000. So expensive. It's probably the most expensive single piece of machinery in this game crazy okay so our guy made it to the spinnery uh, where is the unload point here right there okay Okay, so that finishes 42 and gives us a thousand extra dollars. And then uh, the rest of the cotton will be going into our spinnery. Uh, let's see, where's 42? 42 is finished. So let's look at this again. So that goes to OG Spinnery. OG Spinnery. OG Spinnery, that's a soybeans, that's the sunflowers, OG Spinnery cotton and soybeans. Okay, so for the spinner, for our current spinnery, well, actually, we don't have any cotton in our spinnery because we've just been putting wool in it. Uh, yeah, so there's zero cotton in here, so we'll be able to see 
by the time this is all said and done, we'll be able to see exactly how much cotton we got out of these uh, contracts. But I think uh, it's time to wrap things up here, guys. You pretty much have seen everything I've got to do now. So I'm going to finish up these contracts. And we will start the next episode probably at the end of October. I'm October 3rd. And we'll do the end of the month update and then move into November. So I hope you guys enjoyed this episode. If you did, please hit that like button and subscribe to the channel. Leave a comment, share the video. And we'll catch you in the next episode. Bye-bye.